Hey guys, today we are going through the next part of the Allen School Maths sample paper. So let's get straight into these solutions. Okay, so here for this next question, we're told there are two runners having a race. Gary starts running from the start line at 10 meters per second. Two seconds later, Andy starts running from the start line at 12 meters per second. Part A, we have to work out how long after Gary starts running does Andy catch up with him. So how do we think about this kind of question? The first thing is really understanding what's going on and understanding what the examiner means when they say 10 meters per second. This literally means that every single second, right? So when we have 10 meters per second, instead of just seeing it as a metric, understand what's truly going on. If someone's traveling at 10 meters per second, every single second time, they're traveling a distance of 10 meters. So we have the distance traveled for every single unit of time. So visually, we can think about this. Usually it helps when you try and think about things visually. So on one side, we have Gary, let's call Gary G. And he starts at the start line, he's running 10 meters per second. That means every single second, we have second one, second two, second three, so on and so forth. Every single second, he's traveled 10 meters. Then again, 10 meters. Every single second, he's traveled an extra 10 meters. And then two seconds later, we're told Andy starts running from the line at 12 meters per second. So for Andy, every single second, we'll put it in red, every single second, Andy's running 12 meters, another 12 meters. So how do we use this information to work this question out? Well, think about it like this. We're told that Andy starts running two seconds after Gary has started. So knowing what we know about Gary's meter coverage every single second, how many meters would Gary have already run in those two seconds where Andy hadn't started yet? Well, if Gary's running at 10 meters per second, then in those two seconds where Andy hasn't started yet, Gary is ahead by how many meters? He's ahead by 20 meters. That's how much Gary's ahead by, 20 meters. What's the second thing we know? We know that compared to Gary, Andy is running two meters more every single second. So every second we said, remember, Gary's running 10 meters. In, those, in that same second, Andy's running 12 meters. So every second he's running two meters more. So effectively we can work out this question by thinking about how long it will take Andy to make up that 20 meter gap. And of course, if he's running two extra meters every second, it will take him 10 seconds to make up that 20 meter gap. 10 seconds times two meters gives us that 20, 20 meters. So that's the answer to part A. The answer is 10 seconds, 10 seconds after Gary starts, okay. So that's our answer. How long after Gary starts running does Andy catch up with him? 10 seconds after, because remember he's running those two extra meters every second. 10 meters per second versus 12 meters per second. Okay, so now for part B, this should be pretty simple if we understood everything that was going on in part A. We have to work out how far they both are from the start line when Andy catches up with Gary. Now we know that once Andy starts moving, 10 seconds it takes before he catches up with Gary. We worked that out in part A. So now all we have to do is knowing how long Andy's traveling for the time and also knowing his speed, which is 12 meters per second, we can work out the distance that Andy covered 
before he caught up with Gary. And this will be the place where they both meet. That's our answer. So to work this out, we need to understand the speed distance time triangle. And this helps us to work out all the questions regarding speed distance time, questions like this. So this is how it works. We have speed, distance and time in this triangle. And pretty much we can work out how to work out or how to find each of these elements by covering up another one of those elements. So for example, if you want to work out speed, we simply cover up speed in our speed distance time triangle. And this triangle tells us that to work out speed, we take distance and we divide it by time. Same thing if we want to work out time, cover up time, it's distance divided by speed. And then if you want to work out distance, this time it's a bit different, it's going to be speed times time. So that's the speed distance time triangle, super useful for our 11 plus exams. So now back to this question, how far are they both from the start line? So the word far lets us know we're looking at distance. So here we want the speed and we want to multiply that by the time. So the time Andy takes to catch up is 10 seconds. The speed is 12 meters per second and therefore the distance is going to be 100 and 20 meters. That is our answer. So here for this question, we simply have to work out the difference between these two numbers and then use that to work out what A and then B should be. So not too complicated. For part A, we have 0.2 and 1.2, difference being one, and therefore halfway should be 0.5. So this should be 0.7, and that makes sense because we go from 0.2 plus 0.5 plus 0.5. So 0.7. And same concept here, 0.7 to 1.8 is 1.1. Half of 1.1 is going to be 0.55. And therefore we do 0.7 plus 0.55, giving us 5, 2, carry the 1, the decimal point. 1.25. So these are our answers. Okay, so to start off with this question, we're simply marking some coordinates onto the graph. So it shouldn't be too hard. Part A, mark the point with coordinates 0, 4. So we remember coordinates, it always describes how far to the right we go and then how far up, right and then up. And then when it's negative, it's the opposite. So left and then down. So for B, zero, four, we're not going to the left or right, we're going one, two, three, four up. Then for part B, minus three, zero, we're going one, two, three to the left, zero down. So it's going to be right here. And then the point D forms a square A, B, C, D, right down the coordinates of point D. So here we need to know the attributes of a square that make it a square. The main thing is that in a square, every side is of equal length. So therefore, we have to find a point, a coordinate, that when we join it up to the other coordinates, every side is of equal length. So let's work out first the length of each side. So let's join up what we have already. We have something like this. Okay. So first and foremost, how are we going to work out the length of the side? Well, we can simply use this understanding right here. If we want to go from A to B, we go one, two, three, four across, one, two, three up. Same thing going from B to C. We go one, two, three across, one, two, three, four down, right? So it's three, four, three, four. We can use that to try and find out roughly where 
this next point should be because it should be one, two, three, four across, one, two, three down. It should be right here. And let's confirm if we join up these sides, we see we have what looks like a square. And if we did it differently, let's say one, two, three across, then one, two, three, four down, that would have given us a point here, which when we join it up, does not look like a square. And therefore, we can be pretty confident that this point that we drew out, one, two, three, four across, one, two, three down, is indeed the final coordinate that completes the square. And here we're looking at one minus three. One to the right, three down. So the coordinates of point D are going to be one minus three. Now for part D, we have to work out the area of this square we have just created. And as always, when we're working out the area of larger shapes, the best thing to do when it's not immediately obvious is to turn it into more familiar shapes. So here, the best way to approach it is to split this square up into different shapes because it's a bit awkward. So if we do this, we now have some familiar shapes. We have one triangle here, another one here, another one here, another one here, and then a rectangle in the middle. So first let's tackle triangle one. We know the area of a triangle is base times height divided by two, or width times height divided by two, right? So here, our base is what? We're going from four to minus two. So our base is going to be six. Our height is one, two, three. So we have six times three over two or nine. So let's put nine over here. Nine. So we have one, two, three, four, five. One is nine. Then we have two. Well, for two, what's our base? Well, now we're going from this coordinate, so three, all the way down to this coordinate, so minus three. So again, it's going to be six times one, two, three, the height over two. So same thing, nine, okay. What about three? Well, three, we have a smaller triangle over here. In this case, the base is one, the height is one. So therefore we have one, times one over two, which is a half. So we have 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And finally, we have our rectangle in the middle. Here we have the formula is simply length times width, width times length, length times width, same thing. So what is our length we have? one, two, three, four, five times the width of one, which we can see pretty clearly. And this gives us five. So slowly but surely we're getting through this question. Now we simply add up these different areas and it should give us the total area. Nine plus nine is 18, plus 0.5 and 0.5 is 19, because these two add up to give us one. So 18, 19, 19 plus five, 24. So the area of the square is 24 centimeter squared. If we assume that this is a centimeter grid. Okay, so that is our answer. Okay, so that is all for today. 
Make sure you like the video, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you're the first to know when the next video is released. And on that note, I will see you all next time.